Today we'll be exploring whether pumpkins sink or float. The first pumpkin is a small pumpkin. This pumpkin is whole, it has a stem, skin around it, and on the inside there's pulp and seeds. This will be pumpkin number one. Pumpkin number two will also be a small pumpkin with a stem, skin, but this time no pulp or seeds in the middle. All of the stringy stuff and the seeds have been taken out. This is pumpkin number two. Pumpkin number three is our big pumpkin. Again, this pumpkin has skin on the outside, a place for a stem, and is filled with pulp and seeds. It's pretty heavy. This is pumpkin number three. Pumpkin number four is also big. It also has a big outside skin, a place for the stem, but what's different is there's no pulp or seeds in the middle. This pumpkin's been emptied out, which makes it a little bit lighter. This is pumpkin number four. First, make some predictions about the different types of pumpkins and whether you think they will sink to the bottom or float to the top. Teachers, use this time to pause and explain how to draw your guess of whether the pumpkin will float or sink. Let's test pumpkin number one in the water. Did you think it would sink or float? Pumpkin number one is our small, full pumpkin. Let's see. One, two, three. happening to the pumpkin? Did the pumpkin sink or is it floating? <clears throat> pumpkin number two is also small, but this time all of the seeds and most of the pulp has been removed. What did you guess? Is this pumpkin going to sink or float? Let's see. One, two, three. What's happening with this pumpkin? Pumpkin number three is our heaviest pumpkin. This is a big pumpkin that is totally full of seeds and pulp. It's pretty heavy. So what did you think? Is it going to sink or float? <clears throat> Let's see. Pumpkin number three. One, two, three. What is happening to the pumpkin? Our last pumpkin is also a big pumpkin, but this time I've carved out all the insides. There's very little pulp and no seeds. Will this one sink or float? 
Here we go. What's happening? Now that we've tested all our pumpkins, it's time to write our results. On your Cami document, draw where the pumpkins actually went, whether they floated or sank. Make sure to keep your predictions. That way you can look at what did I think would happen versus what actually happened. So why do all of the pumpkins float? I'll give you a hint. It has to do with what's inside the pumpkin. Maybe do some exploring on your own to find out why pumpkins float. Thanks for experimenting with me.